I don't have a rigorous writing schedule, and 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 that's a little dangerous to uh, to recommend because if you keep waiting for the idea to come, it may never come. So I guess I should say that I. I let things occur to me rather than going in search of them, but I think if things didn't occur to me for a good long time, I would set up that old schedule again and say, which I've done at various times in my life of just, you know, at one time I said, you have to write two little stories every day, uh, no matter what, you know, they don't have to be great, they can be odd, and um, in fact, odd stories are born that way if you, uh, because the sensor is sort of turned off, you just say, I'm going to do it no matter what, it doesn't matter how strange it is. But then if you if you really stick to that, you know, in a month you would have 60 little stories, you know, and some of them would be good, and some you could make longer if you wanted to. So it's it's kind of a good uh, a good little rule. I I am very exacting about going through many many drafts until it's just right. Um, I write the first draft quite quickly because I'm trying to capture whatever it is that's that's asking to be written. And but then but then there are many many drafts where I might just be changing a comma or or taking half a sentence out or something. Um, usually the story is. Um, born more or less the length it's going to be. The very last one I read, PhD, actually started as one of the dream pieces because it was a friend's dream. A friend who actually has a PhD kept dreaming that she did not have a PhD. I guess this is the nightmare that PhDs have. <laughs> Similar to the teaching nightmare, which is a regular one for Many teachers, where you you know you're you're there on campus, but you didn't bring the folder of work, you didn't bring the textbook, you didn't bring many other things that you need for the class, or you forgot entirely that the class was being held. Um, many varieties of that one. Um, and as for translation, I've I've been translating since college at least, probably even you know high school, and I've really always loved it. So even though now I I've determined not to go on translating books, long books, because the Proust and the Flaubert each they, they both took each took about two or three years. Um, I'm now translating very small stories from the Dutch because I, I knew German, so I decided to teach myself Dutch. And I really enjoy this. Uh, did one even this morning, even though this is, this is a long day, but there's something so refreshing. This particular Dutch writer sends an email story. He's, I mean, he sends a, a story out to an email list um, every week or two, uh, if not more often. So if I can read it and understand it, which I usually can because he writes very simply, I, I go ahead and do a draft. And I, I really recommend tra translating. I, I feel like advocating strongly that if you can write and you know any smidgen of a foreign language, you should translate at least one thing in your life. Because we have such a such an isolated uh, culture in that sense, that it's not uncommon for a European to be able to speak, say, three languages. It's, it's not really that uncommon, but we we Americans can usually only speak one, unless we're we grew up really by in a bilingual household, and then we have two probably. But as for learning it in school and remembering it, we don't, we're not too good at that. I saw both my sons not retain their years and years of foreign language teaching. But anyway, I could go on and on about that too. But I think it just, um, besides getting material from it and enjoying it in itself, I think it also just makes my sense of what English can do much, much sharper because, you know, there's a limit. I can't avoid a problem. I have to have to reproduce what the author has said and I have to think how it can be done in English. So it's a great exercise.